Hi guys, this is James Ward with uh, KDUX TV News. I'm standing here with Dave Prowse. Hi Dave, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm very well, very well, very busy, very busy. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate your time, Dave. Now, you, uh, as Vader, you set the tone for, for, for villains, and what, what was it like to get into character? What, what did it take uh, for you? Well, I didn't have any problems getting into character, because uh, my, my whole career has been playing monsters and creatures and, and, and the heavies, and you know, I've, I've never played a good guy in, 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 in my entire, well, just recently I did, but, uh, uh, but you know, over the, over the, right from the beginning of my career, it was always like I, I did Frankenstein's monsters, and I did I did Hammer horror movies, and Stanley Kubrick's Clockwork Orange, and all all these you know very very um, some, sometimes violent, but sometimes you know you know horrific horrific movies. So uh, I had no problems with Darth Vader, and then and also you know playing Darth Vader, once you you put that suit on and it weighs about forty pounds, and then you put the helmet and the mask on, and that makes you uh, really. Pissed off, excuse my language, but it makes you uh, it makes you feel fierce. Um, and I said, then you you you, uh, you can't you, you can't bear it to stand around waiting while everybody's sort of trying to get everything ready, and then you you because you're, you're sweating buckets in the suit like that. So, no, I didn't have any problems you know, feeling villainous. Yeah. What what would a scene consist of? I mean, like five, ten, thirty minutes of a scene wearing the suit at a time. Well, it, it depends. I see. The thing was. I, I, I used to I used to go into the studios in the mornings and I used to go used to go get get dressed well not dressed but I used to I used to get into the the, the trousers and a t-shirt and the boots and, and the sort of the the the, the, um, the, sh the shin guards I used to put that on and then I had a dressing room actually on the set as well and a dresser and so I used to try and stay as long as I possibly could in the t-shirt and, you know, and 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 you know just casual. Um, and until, until you were called, and, and then when they would they would call you, um, and say they want you know, get start getting dressed, you know, because we're going to start filming with you, and so I would put on everything but the helmet and the mask, you see, and so you would then rehearse, uh, with, you know, you would do whatever rehearsals you had to do, and then they would want to do a final rehearsal with the helmet and the mask on because of all the reflections and everything else in the, because it was quite funny actually because, uh, you know, uh, when we when we did the movie. Uh, I think George Lucas wanted the helmet to, to look so sort of a bit battle scarred, you know, and, and dusty, and you know, and then uh, when I worked with Irving Kirshner, he wanted it all shiny and bright and things like this, you know. Um, so as so, I so said, then, then you then you eventually you eventually you know do the scene, and and hopefully if everything goes right, you can you, sh you can shoot it in maybe three or four takes, you know. Um, but if everything goes wrong, you know, because and it can do, as you know, we're filming. I mean, uh, everything from hairs in the gate to uh, the sound man not getting the every, you know getting all the dialogue right and the actor forgetting his lines and you know but now I mean that, but then when we filmed Star Wars I mean I mean if you if you did half a dozen takes it was that was a lot like you know but and now nowadays you know they, they you, you 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 rehearse a lot to shoot the shoot the sequence normally take another one just for for insurance purposes make certain everything's okay and that's it and you go on to the next scene so uh, when back in those days as I said, we're talking about 30 years ago. Um, you know, it was it was it was quite normal to, to as I said, to, to to do about half a dozen takes, or or sometimes more if if, if things were were going wrong. But if things went right, you, you could get it in two or three. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now, Clockwork Orange. When when you read the script, what did you think first? I never time? saw it. I never saw the script. There was, all I got is uh, I went I went to see Stanley, and uh, he said he said he said I want you to I, can can you can you just read this? You see, and it was only one line. It was one line. And uh, and uh, and I, I read this line, and he said, "Oh well, I can tell you're not acting." <laughs> I said, "Well, what do you expect me to do with one line?" Like, you know, and I, I forget what the one line was or something like this. You know, then I, I call, he called me up again. He said, oh, "You're going to do the scene where you're going to carry Patrick McGoon, Patrick McGee, um, down the stairs in his wheelchair." I said, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. I said, I said, uh, I said, Pat McGee must weigh about 170 pounds. I said, your wheelchair is probably another 30. I said, that's 200 pounds. I said, you want me to carry two, but 200 pounds down the stairs, three flights of stairs, wheel him into the table, then do a dialogue scene. He, he said, yeah. I said, well, I said, well, your name's not One Take Kubrick, is it? Like, you know, and everybody went, oh my God, he's calling One Take Kubrick. Like, you know, well, everything went quiet, and and he, he, just, he just sort of smiled. And he's always shoot it as quick as we can. And I think I think we shot it in about six takes. Yeah, yeah. I know you got to get back real quick. Um, what 
Is it what is it that's always interested you about the bad guys, about the the, the evil characters? Oh, they're always the best. Always the best bits. You think you think back on all the movies that you've ever seen, where there are goodies and baddies. I said you always remember the bad guy. And people always remember the villain. And, and what happens? Darth Vader comes out. Star Wars comes out. And who's the character that you remember most from Star Wars? You, you don't remember. You don't think about Princess Leia every time Star Wars comes out. It's always Darth Vader. You know. Which is lovely, as far as I'm concerned. You know, and as I was, I mean, I mean, the proof of the pudding is is here. Here we are, I'm 30, 33 years later, um, traveling around the world on the back of Darth Vader. I mean, I've been, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of given given me a very very good life. I've seen it. I've been all over the world, and uh, and and and, it's, it's, and here I am in, in beautiful downtown Dallas. You know, so it's it's wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you. Appreciate your time, Dave, and congratulations on your success. By far, my favorite evil character. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.